Okay, I just want to um, I'm going to make a video on this little uh, AM FM probably late 60s early 70s York solid state AM FM portable radio. I had a buddy of mine send me this and um, he wanted me to see if I could get it working so let's uh, see what's going on with it. Okay, got it plugged in. It's a 10 transistor radio. This is back during when before the um, Federal Trade Commission stepped in on old radios back during the transistor area era excuse me when the uh, when radios were becoming transistor the uh, the gimmick back then was to see how how many transistors they could put in a radio who had the most transistors this one is 10 transistors it's probably probably most of them are just wired as diodes or something to that effect but well I guess it's got a FM could be a little bit more I've seen I've seen um, a few uh, AM radios portable radios that are uh, 10 transistor too so this one may not be quite as uh, bad as some of those AM ones were. I've seen 10 and 12 transistor AM radios, which is just totally ridiculous. You don't need that many transistors to even, even half of those transistors to make one work. But anyway, uh, back to the point. I got this thing on. I hear some static, but uh, we have no dial movement. Absolutely just static, no dial movement, which tells me probably most likely the uh, dial string is broken. Actually, one of my least favorite repairs are dial cords, but uh, <clears throat> let's um, hopefully it's something simple. Maybe the dial cord just slipped off or something like that. But anyway, let me go ahead and pull this thing apart and see what's going on with it. Okay, and pulling this thing apart, I did notice on the back of it, it is made in Japan. Um, UL approved, and um, on the back, on the side of it, we've got our AC and battery switch and AM, FM on the side. I think that's the first time I've seen a, seen a plug on the side of it for a telephone. Don't think I've ever seen that uh, option before got an earphone jack above that and just the normal controls okay looks like we got a clear plastic cover over everything that's a little different I ain't seen too many this is back in the day when they had the schematic on the back of the radio try to find that in a newer radio you won't just won't find it anymore people just don't care it's you know made in China and it only costs probably at the most five or ten dollars to make so just throw it away and buy another one you know this uh back in the day you could service your radios and keep them going you know and um this is something you just don't see anymore schematic posted somewhere on the radio but uh anyway it's pretty clear to read you got your fm converter and your fm rf stages here FMIF amplifier stage. Uh, looks like you got a dual FMIF three one two three uh, IF FM stages and a detector stage. Uh, AM converter stage and AF amplifier and your driver and power amp. So I think that's where they're getting the ten transistors out of all those little bit extra stages. And I've seen them with. Uh, just an AF amp and then you got your power output stage but then they even got a driver with two and even a power amplifier power amp out stage which looks kind of like a push pull outfit with two transistors like that a little bit different but uh, I guess I had to get that transistor count up I noticed the uh, front of this thing is coming out of the radio from the cabinet 
right here I guess I'll have to see if I can straighten that out if it's possible yeah let me go ahead and get this clear plastic cover off and see if we can figure out what the trouble is with the dial cord well I got the front of it up out the circuit board out of it not really how it's supposed to come apart but the front um, this fiber board here is supposed to be glued down in here and it's pulled out of the cabinet the um, looks like the circuit board is on these spacers here and um, then you got your screws that secure the front faceplate to that board there which is glued to the cabinet here but anyway, um, looks like we've gotten down in here. I see where the dial cord is broken here. As you can see that. My finger wiggling it. There it is. And then it goes over this little brass roller here, which goes down to the tuner, which is up under there. Here's the other end of it here. But um, it's broken here. And, you know, if you had a enough slack you may be able to tie that back together but it probably wouldn't work because it's got to roll on this so it probably just needs a new dial cord but um you gotta you gotta closely uh if you can't find the dial dial string on a schematic anywhere which this radio is kind of questionable i don't know if i would have that on any of my dial string diagrams or not but um you got to closely um, pay attention to how many turns on the tuner knob, how many turns you got here, and how it routes from there around here. It looks like pretty much everything is still in place, so I should be able to, you know, just remember. I probably have to take pictures of this, but the um, best way to do it. And remember how it all wraps around how it routes because if you don't put I've learned with these dial strings I, I really don't like doing these because they're just really a headache I mean if you don't do something just perfect it, it, it won't work it, it'll slip and it, it's very uh, <laughs> it's very uh, you know exact type of work if you don't put this three turns it'll slip uh, if this doesn't route around, it won't work right. And, you know, it looks like they've even got maybe uh, a few turns down there on that tuner, on the tuner wheel there. But, uh, yep, and the way it goes, you know, routes and loops on there too, it's got to be matched up just right. If it doesn't, it won't work right. Well, I just so happened to buy some dial string from somebody on eBay because I've got to re put the dial cord on this one here on this radio here it's a 1946 Stromberg Carlson AM tabletop radio and um, the radio works great it just has a broken dial cord on it so I went ahead and bought some dial cord so I do have some dial cord in stock. It's not really top quality stuff. Uh, and I was led to believe it was a little bit better quality than what it actually was. But um, anyway, so I don't know. Maybe I can tinker around here and look through some junk radios or something and maybe find a good dial cord. I'm not sure. But this one here looks like it's going to take quite a long uh, piece of string to restring it. But... We'll have to get it apart and see if we can get down in there and um, figure out how this thing works. Well, I figured out how to get this circuit board out. Uh, it wasn't too bad. Um, circuit board mounts up like this here. Then you got you these these little brass dowel screw here, which go in here like this and that I don't drop it um, and that's what holds on the you go this route but that's what holds on your black your little plastic piece here and you just 
It's got little slots in it where you put your flathead screwdriver in there and just back them out like that. You pull all three of them out, which there's the other two there to go. One went here and the other one went here. And let you just back those out and then your circuit board just falls down right there. And you can get right to your dial string here, which is broken here. But uh, anyway, so yeah, then that would, so you got your dial cord there, which goes to your needle corner here. Get my finger coordinated there. It broke here, but it this end would go around this wheel here and then back to your dial string and all that. So anyway, it looks like they've got two cords hooked to the spring here, which routes here, which is three turns on the the tuning knob here, and then over this wheel and then to your dial and then of course back around just like I showed here so it's not too bad uh, I could probably do this one hopefully not too bad <laughs> we got dial cord anyway uh, I'll have to see if I got some um, dial cord off of something or just go ahead and use that that new cord that I bought which really wasn't as good a quality as I thought it would be it's just reason main reason why I really don't want to use it but anyway let me see if I can find some dial string around here well we've uh, got the radio playing I uh, don't know how it's uh, how that happened I was able to get the dial string back on it but um, couldn't get no sound other than static and um, so I decided that I'd come back to it you know the next day and here we are the next day after I put the dial string on this radio I turned it back on and it's playing well, uh, so uh, this radio is playing so let's see if we can get a reception on FM that switch I think needs to be cleaned a little bit Well, I got a reception, but it's not picking up that many stations. Seems kind of weak. It's not picking up that many stations. There's usually a lot more stations on the air than that. A lot of these are just from the local area around here. Not really picking up much other than that. So there may be a an alignment issue or something like that. Okay, now we're back to static again. So we're going to hook up the signal tracer and I'm going to show you the signal this morning on his own schedule here. driving with Uber. With Uber you can write your own paycheck. If you want to go out and make $20. Signal on that transistor. You come. That resistor. Get it there. So on the other side of that resistor, you get nothing. So I think I'm gonna. Yeah, I might need to check that one out. I mean, that one that might be open. That capacitor right there has got it. I 
I got something in the IF circuit. Because you come over here next to the audio output transformer, you get the same thing that the speaker's putting out. No signal. No signal. This is all on the audio out output stage. All this stuff over here is getting all this stuff over here is getting the same things coming out of the speaker and then you come over here well this little resistor right here boom you get a signal nothing that capacitor is hooked to this resistor nothing out of the other side of that resistor Um, I've been doing some signal tracing on this thing because the uh, sometimes when you turn this thing on it would uh, just not receive a signal at all and um, if it did it was very low volume like this here so I don't know if you can hear that through the camera's microphone or whatever but it's just it's wide open and it's just very very low well the the problem with it not receiving a signal was uh, it would you could turn it on after it sat a while and then it would would play and then once you t either turned it off or um, or listen to it for a while it would just go out that ended up being a capacitor and ended up being a uh, this little 30 microfarad six volt cap here and now I'm getting a signal but no sound so you know so I'm going through this thing I'm gonna show y'all and you know so happy one day and do a signal here you make me feel beautiful with the signal tracer and this basically just amplifies the signal the radio is sending through circuits to a to uh, an amplified speaker basically is all it is you ground it here i've got it to a ground so you know we get the signal here and then we go through and here's the audio out here and we get you come over here where it connects in to this jack over here which is this jack here the bottom jack. An extra thirty percent. We get a signal burner. here. The best brands for your home. Forty percent. Nice clear signal. Off. Now this is wired in series up to the next jack at the top. We'll go through and touch that, and that's what we get. So what it ends up being is. That jack there. The jack has a loose connection. So after, you know, it, it seemed like over almost an hour of signal tracing, we come out to here. Style at BC's famous line dance social until midnight. So literally, this jack just has a short in it. So. I think we'll get some contact cleaner or something to clean that connection there and uh, put the radio back together. That's that's actually all it was was just that I've never seen this before. It's a telephone jack. It goes the audio line goes in here and wires in series to this earphone jack, which from there from the earphone jack, you know, it goes to the speaker. So anything going from here was get was being you know significantly resisted and you know going into here. So that's right. That's it. Let, well, me you, you, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That's all it is. Just, just a loose connection. Well, you know. So. Anything? Tell DL. 
we got to try to see if we can come up with a cure for that little loose connection there and um, we'll get back to you okay as you can see there's an issue with the case on this thing this front face plate attaches to a fiber board behind it which is screwed to the back of the the, the face plate here and then this goes into a case into the case here I can turn that around and show you it fits inside of here to the fiber board that which goes inside this leather cover and the stuff glues together which is coming glued the same on this side you get a little edge here and then a notch cut in for the notch that goes on this on this side you can see the notch where my finger is at here so basically we're just gonna have to glue all that back together that's how they did it from the factory so uh, we got our little trusty little 3M glue here which is plastic emblem and trim adhesive glue that stuff will hold anything I've even put shoes back together with that stuff and had them had the shoes wear out before that glue will come undone. Um, about to see if I can't tack this thing back together with some glue and then go ahead and put the put the chassis back in there and screw that back down and solder well solder our antenna back on and put the chassis back in. Okay, here it is, the York radio. I got it playing. Ryan Farm Tour. I'm not sure if he's going to be here on the redo date. This coming Sunday, the 11th. The house steward. We uh, follow the man. And when you take him, say, Why have you repaid evil for good? It's weird how the FM band has 108 right here and then you have all this over here that's basically nothing. Surprised it doesn't pick up something in the aircraft band going up that high, but I guess it just, I don't know, somehow it doesn't. Anyway, that's FM. Never really seen one that did that. It had that big gap between the end of the dial and the end of the band, supposedly. That's AM. Let me shut the fluorescent light off so we won't get so much interference. Clemson Tigers are one of my favorite. The October 17th games in the ACC. This thing's got a really good AM reception. But okay, that's the AM FM York Solid State. Don't have any idea what model it is. Let's see. It's probably on the back. Let's see if we can't. Maybe on the schematic here. The model BE-104. I would guess from the uh, late 60s or early 70s. Back working again. Hopefully it'll uh, be good for about another 45 years. Thanks for watching.